All right, so we created the doorknob for the front door, and um, we got a good taste for sub Ds here and getting started. But that's just barely the beginning, the tip of the iceberg. We still have a lot more things to do in this scene before we can uh, go ahead and say that we're done. So these little doors here for the rest of the house don't have doorknobs. We're going to fix that right now. So this is how we're going to do it. I'm going to go ahead and select all these doors. So I'm going to go ahead and select all of these doors here. And I'm not going to select the last one right there, just these. Okay, so all these doors that are the same type. I'm going to isolate the selection on them. And then I'll go to one of these doors down here. So these doors, they're still pivot door objects, which means that I can actually go ahead and take the uh, open parameter. And I can open and close doors. So we know where the doorknob has to go. It has to go over here on this side. Okay. So what kind of doorknob are we going to create? Well, I have a reference image here of a very common type of doorknob found in interior doors for houses. Basically a traditional sort of round doorknob here, uh, which is going to be pretty straightforward and simple to do. So let's start off by creating a little base here uh, where the doorknob actually is going to go hooked up to. So let's go ahead and create that. Okay. I'm going to, go to, I'm going to start with this door object here. And there's no particular reason for me choosing that one. I just decided to do that. And I'm going to create myself a cylinder. Make sure that auto grid's turned on. I'm going to create a cylinder right against that little piece of the door right there. There we go. I'm going to move it to about right there. Okay. Uh, eight sides is more than good enough. What I'm going to do now is I'm just going to go ahead and convert that to an editable poly. Go to wireframe mode. I know there's a polygon in the back I don't need, so I'm going to get rid of it. And there we go. Now I'm going to turn on NURBS toggle. I'm going to take this front polygon, move it back. Let me look at my reference image here just to see what I need to be uh, create. So let's go ahead and create this back piece right here. It's kind of like the base of the doorknob, so to speak. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and take the entire object and let's just make it a little bit bigger. So it's something like that. I think like that looks just fine. Maybe I'll scale it down a little bit. Now I'm just being picky again as usual. All right, I'm going to move this to about right here. And I'm going to scale this polygon down just a bit to kind of give it sort of an inset. And we don't have to go exactly by the image, but I am going to use the image as a good guide and reference. So you can see here this kind of insets down. Okay. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use the inset tool. Inset this polygon, scale it down. I'm going to go to NURMS toggle so you can see the low res cage and just see kind of what I'm building here. Okay. I'm going to extrude this out. And I'm basically going to try to create this bulge right there. So I'll extrude this out to about maybe, maybe right here is good. Something like that. And I'll scale it down like, uh, like this. And then at this point right here, Let's scale it down just a little bit like that. Okay, at this point, this polygon here is pretty much finished. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to take that same polygon, hold down shift, scale it down to make uh, basically a clone, a clone part of mesh. And I'm going to clone it as a new element. Okay, so I hit okay. So it's still part of the original object. So I'm going to take this to about right here. Maybe right there is good. Maybe I'll scale it down a little bit more. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the extrude options here. Hit OK. I'm going to want to pull this out from about here to about maybe over here right there. So I'm going to pull this out about this much maybe, like this. I think that's going to be pretty good. And then to try to get this shape that's right here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to edge mode and select that edge right there. Let me take the picture and get it out of here. I'm going to take that edge and select its ring. Okay. I'm going to use the connect tool and I'm going to connect that maybe one time, but I'm going to move the connection over here closer to this end of this uh, piece of geometry. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take uh, this polygon that's right here and I'm going to scale it up. Something like that. If I bring the picture back, you can see what I'm doing. I'm trying to bring it up to that, uh, to that point right there. So I'll scale it back down just a bit, something like that will look pretty good. If I turn on NURBS toggle, you can see how I start to get that kind of arch shape right there. And then at this point, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to leave that part alone. And I'm going to take 
this polygon that I have right here and I'm gonna take that one and I'm gonna scale it or maybe I'm not gonna scale it tell you what I am gonna do I'm gonna move it forward a little bit but I'm gonna hold down shift while I do that to clone it and I'm gonna make sure it's uh, it's an element okay and then right here what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and extrude this guy out I'm going to extrude them to about here, basically to this point right there. So I've got this part to this part. So something like that looks pretty good. Okay. Then I'm going to take this edge that's right there, get this guy out of the way, select the ring. I'm going to go to the connect right here. Yeah, I'm going to connect that maybe one time. Yeah, I'm going to take that connection. I'm going to switch to world mode for coordinates. Remember, hold down Alt, right click to have access to that coordinate menu. And I'm going to scale that up to get something like this. And I'm going to turn on my NURMS toggle. And you can see the, the what it is that I'm going for right there. So something like that. I'm going to take the front polygon and move it forward a little bit. Okay. Now what I'm going to do here is going to take this uh, this group of polygons here and I'm going to move it out like that out of the way I'm going to take this polygon that's right here and select its edges and with its edges selected I'm going to go to the chamfer tool and I'm going to chamfer this just a little bit and add a segment right there and I'll hit OK All right. Let me go ahead and let me add more subdivisions to this. So I'll go to iterations and maybe make it two. So when I render this out, it looks like that, which looks much better. More like the image. I'm going to go back to element mode and grab the entire element that's right there. And move it back. And here's what I'm going to do right here. I'm going to take this edge that's right here, or this border that's right there. And what I'll do is I'm probably going to go ahead and chamfer that. So let me take the chamfer tool. I'm going to chamfer that very small amount. Editor, edit that out of the video. We're not going to chamfer. Start again in 3, 2, 1. I'm going to go ahead and select that border of edges right there. And I'm going to cap it to seal that off. Then I'm going to take that polygon, the new one that's in the back, and select its uh, edges. And I'm going to chamfer those new edges. Just a little bit. Give it about maybe two segments. Just to make that nice and sharp. I'm going to select that element. I'm going to go to front view mode. I'm going to move this guy back. to the point where it basically is touching that just a little bit like so. A little tiny bit of penetration right there is exactly what we need. To render that out you can see we have this nice sort of dividing edge right there just like in the uh, just like in the picture. Okay. Now this part of the doorknob I don't really like too much so I'm going to go ahead and see if I can fix this. I'm going to take the front polygon move it forward like this just to make that look more like the doorknob in the picture so we end up with something like this let me look at it from this side okay that's pretty good okay let me go ahead and finish off the base over here the base would be this part that's right here let me go ahead and see if I can finish this off now let me go to edge mode here and select this edge that's right here and grab its loop and with that edge selected I'm gonna chamfer that but I'm not gonna make it super sharp I'm going to soften it up a little bit, something like this, so when I render it out, you get kind of a semi-hard edge. It's not really hard, and it's not really soft. It's kind of an in-between, okay? With about uh, two segments, it looks pretty good. And I'll hit OK. And then the next one I'll do is, let me turn NURMS toggle off. I'm going to select this edge that's right there, grab its loop. And it may be a little bit hard to see because the object is red, so let me change the color of the object. There we go. Uh, this sort of lime color will make it easier for you to see what I'm doing. So I, I want this loop of edges right there. And I'm going to chamfer that. And this one I'm going to make it look uh, a little bit sharper. So let me turn on NURMS toggle. Render that out. So we end up with something like that. That looks pretty neat. I'll soften it up a little bit more. 
so it's kind of like a soft hard edge kind of deal and there we go okay all right I'm gonna say I'm happy with that and I'm done with the uh, doorknob let me actually call it that we we'll call it doorknob zero one okay so that doorknob is done I'm gonna move it down a little bit okay so what I've done is I looked at the uh, interior house doorknobs and I actually took a measurement to try to find out what the measurement is and uh, what I found was that doorknobs should be about on average about three feet up okay so I'll go to the transform typing tool remember that's F12 and go ahead and put in three feet so you end up with something like this okay so I'm gonna say I'm happy with that now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna create doorknobs for the rest of the uh, doors in my house so since that's pretty much a repetitive process and you know it's something that's pretty easy to handle on your own go ahead and get that done I'm gonna go ahead and get that done and not to bore you or make the video too long I'm gonna go ahead and skip that part of the video and um, and when I come back to the video I'll be done with that and we can move on to the next uh, the next next task I'm gonna go ahead and clone this doorknob here for the rest of the doors in the scene and I'm gonna do that I'm gonna fast forward the video and go quickly because there's really uh, not much to it it's just taking it cloning it rotating it put it in a position stuff like that so uh, I'm sure you can handle that so go ahead and get that done Ay, 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 ay. It's twelve feet up.
Okay, so I'm pretty much done creating the doorknobs for all these uh, little doors inside the house. What I need to do is create something for this uh, set of doors right here, these double doors. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do next. So let's go ahead and get that done. I'm going to isolate the selection here. And what I'm going to do for this guy is, I'm not going to create actual doorknobs. What I'm going to do is create some kind of like a little handle or something uh, in the door. Because these are sliding doors that uh, you just slide. Uh, slide open okay so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this guy and mm, I'm not exactly gonna convert it to an editable poly just yet what I'll do is uh, let me go ahead and make an original clone of this guy so I'm gonna take this guy and hit control V to clone him I'm gonna make a copy and I'm gonna call it uh, sliding door original okay and then I'm going to go ahead and hide the selection. I'm going to work on this guy. That way I don't mess up the original. And uh, it's always good to have a backup copy just in case. So I'm going to take this guy here and convert it to an editable poly. Now that it's an editable poly, I'm going to go ahead and let me take uh, all of this stuff here on the right side. I'm going to go ahead and delete that stuff. So I just have one door. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to edge mode and select these two edges here. I'm going to go ahead and connect them maybe two times. Okay, so I'm going to end up with something like this. I'm going to take the top edge, I'm going to go to the align tool and see about aligning that in the Y axis. Looks like it's going to work. Okay, I'm going to take that new polygon that I have right there and go into a front view here. I'm going to scale it down, something like that. Move it down a little bit like this. In fact, what I'll do is I'll go to the Transform Typing Tool, and I'll place this at 3 feet. So the center of it's going to be at about 3 feet, so something like that. It does look like it's kind of low, however. So let me go ahead and move that up a little bit more. To just below the middle of the door. Okay. So something like this is pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and use the uh, inset tool and inset that a bit. Get something like this. Move it over here. Maybe scale it back up. Scale it in. Make it a little bit skinnier. Bring it to about right there. Okay. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to extrude this guy in into the actual door. It's not too far in just a bit like that okay now that I have this sort of uh, indentation here I can go ahead and create myself a little sub D object so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the polygon that's there hold down shift bring it out like this okay I'm gonna go ahead and um, should I make it an element no I'm gonna make it a new object so I'm gonna take the new object I'm gonna change its color maybe a light blue. I'm going to take its uh, polygon here, move it in a little bit like that, then I'm going to scale it up. It's a little bit hard to see what I'm doing here. So I'll scale it up so it's a little bit bigger than the opening. Okay. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to extrude it, pull it out like so, to about right here is pretty good. So it sticks out just a little bit, so it looks like a metal plate that's been attached to the door. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and use the inset tool. Inset that, and then I'm going to scale it. Just a bit like that. And it should fit right into the hole of the door. So what I'm going to do is extrude this. Move it into the door like this. Okay. And now I'm going to turn on NERMS toggle. I'm going to end up with something like this. And let me go to the uh, subdivision surface and add one more iteration. So it's got two subdivisions basically. And it looks something like this, which is obviously not very good. So to fix this is going to be pretty easy. I'm going to go ahead and go to edge mode and select all these corner edges that are right here. Okay, so these, these, and these. Select their loops. Okay. Then I'm going to go to chamfer. I'm going to make a very small chamfer to kind of get this to follow more of a squarish shape. I'm going to add a segment to it. 
I'm going to do something like this. All right, I'm going to hit OK. Now we do have a polygon in the middle right there. And that polygon isn't too happy right now. But uh, that's okay. We're going to fix that in a moment. We're going to take that polygon's edges. And we're going to chamfer those. Bring that out. And we end up with something like that. Okay. And let me turn NERMS toggle off. I want to do um, something like this. Looks pretty good. So let me turn NERMS toggle back on. So it looks pretty pretty smooth right there. I'm going to go back to NERMS toggle. I'm going to take that polygon that's in the middle right there. I'm going to go to subdivision. I'm going to hold down shift and go to tessellate. And I'm going to tessellate this based on the, let me see, probably on the face here. And that cleans up some of those strange artifacts that we had there a moment ago. Now what I'm going to do is go to edge mode, select this edge here. I'm going to grab its ring all the way around. Or actually we can select this edge here which is even better. And select a loop that goes all around the object. Okay. I'm going to do the same thing with this edge that's inside right there. I'm going to go to chamfer. Chamfer that a small amount, something like this. Bring that out and we end up with something like that. Okay. Now you can go... Uh, one segment or two. I'm going to go with two. Looks pretty good. If I look at this guy, render amount, I end up with something like that. Okay, so that's not uh, not too bad. Okay. Now, last but not least, I want there to be a little latch right there for this thing. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to exit isolation mode. I'm going to go back to um, this guy here, and I'm going to take... Remember this latch that we created, these two? What I'm going to do is I'm going to take and I'm ripping these guys off into a new object. Okay. I'm going to take this guy and I'm going to take its center pivot and center it to the middle of the object there just so it's easier to work with. Now I'm going to come back to this, uh, this blue piece I made over here. I'm going to go to the align tool, select the blue piece, go with center, center, hit OK. And there it is. It brought it over. Now I'm just going to rotate it about 90 degrees this way. I'm going to make the latch bigger, for just, just for this door. I'm going to place it about right there, so I end up with something like that. And maybe it's a little bit too big, so I'll just scale it down a little bit. Move it so it penetrates the little blue piece a little bit like that. Place that about right there. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is take the blue piece, go to attach, attach this guy to him. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the pivot point, center it to the object. I'm going to go to my grid and snap settings. I'm going to turn off all my grid and snap settings except for vertex mode. I'm going to make sure vertex mode is on. And I'm going to take that guy and I'm going to snap it to say this vertex up here of the door. Okay. And by doing that, I can symmetrize this guy perfectly. So I'm going to take the actual door here. And I need to take the pivot point of the door. And I need to do the same thing. I'm going to take it and snap the pivot point to one of these vertices on the edge of the door. And with the door selected, I'm going to take this door. I'm going to go to Mesh Editing. I'm going to go to Symmetry. Flip it on the X. I'm going to tell it to not weld or slice along the mirror. Okay. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and collapse that. So there we go. Now I'm going to take this guy here. And I'm going to do Symmetry. But remember what I said. You can't symmetrize until you turn NERMS toggle off. So make sure it's not a sub D object and then go ahead and symmetrize it. So, oops, that's the wrong modifier. So I'll go ahead and symmetrize that guy, flip him on the X. I don't want it to slice or weld anything. That's perfectly fine. I'm going to go ahead and collapse its modifier stack, make sure it's an editable poly. They both are. I'm going to turn on NERMS toggle again. And there we go. So when I come over here and render this out, I end up with these sort of little handle pieces there for uh, for those big sliding double doors. Okay. So now I got that done. I'm going to say I'm happy with that, and uh, we're pretty much finished with this. All right. So that's going to do it for this video. We're going to end this here, and in the next one, we're just going to pick up and move on to the next modeling task and get it done.